Hello all YouTubers, I'm the Weather Dude. Welcome back to this weather video for October 16, 2020. For today, we're going to be talking about two additional potential tropical cyclones. So stay tuned and enjoy. If you like staying up to date with the latest weather forecasts and updates, then please consider hitting the subscribe button below. Let's see how fast we can get to 2,000 subscribers. Also, to help this video's performance very much, please consider clicking the like button and sharing this video with your friends. Also, please consider watching the whole video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So we're going to be mainly focusing on Invest 94L here in the North Central Atlantic for today. But I also did want to touch on briefly the system that is down in the Caribbean. Now, I don't know, is it still there? Because according to, yeah, there it is. So 30% chance for the other system, but mainly we're going to be focusing on Invest 94L in today's video. Two potential tropical cyclones. Yes, it's October, but hurricane season goes all the way through the end of November. So we got a little ways to go. All right, I know it's been a very rough hurricane season for so many of you, including me. All right, so we have Invest 94L, 60% chance of development in the next five days and still a medium chance of development even within two days. So shower activity, um, it's a broad non-tropical low pressure, but a, a surface low has formed, even though it's quote unquote non-tropical yet. It is 600 miles east southeast of Bermuda. It will eventually be passing pretty close to Bermuda. Um, this will be becoming better organized and some satellite wind data has indicated that maybe the circulation is becoming better defined. So that's obviously good for development. Um, we are expecting additional development from the system. We could see subtropical or tropical depression I think especially if it's going to continue moving this way and curving north, I think it could become subtropical. All right, but it could still become fully tropical as well. The reason it has a chance to be subtropical is because of how far north in the latitude scale is. Because you can see it's like 30, 31 degrees north latitude. All right, And this low will meander over the central Atlantic well to the southeast of Bermuda. But it could pass pretty close um, maybe in the next 10 days, let's say. Then we have the other system that's seeing in the Southern Caribbean has a 30% chance of development within the next five days and no chance over the next two days. So um, we got a few days before this one could potentially develop. It's a broad area of low pressure that is expected to form early next week. Keep in mind, like the other system, there's no X on the map, which means there's really no storm center yet, let alone a low pressure center. All right, which means that's this is just where activity could develop, right? We don't have a storm center yet, like with 94. All right. And we could see some gradual development next week as this moves into the southwestern and western Caribbean Sea. All right, so let's talk about Invest 94L. All right, the main focus for today's video. And winds are 30 miles an hour, so they're pretty high already, even though pressure is actually high as well, which is obviously higher pressure means less wind. 1,013 millibars of pressure, but it could be getting lower. All right, and you can just tell by the satellite imagery, this definitely looks subtropical. All right, I wouldn't say without a doubt, but it definitely has a lot of subtropical characteristics. The low is spinning all the way down here. We got a lot of the precipitation well far from the center. It, it's, it's got that look of a subtropical storm. I've seen the look on a lot of these systems. And there's really not much coming on the backside. All of the, act, most if not all of the activity, all right, is just well to the east all right, of where the storm center actually is, which is right there. All right, so, and there's also definitely some shear involved with this. You'll see that as well. All right, so let's close out of that. Now, we have, now, where the storm center is, is actually to the top right, so it's actually right about here, right? So in this general zone right here. So it's staying in some slightly above average waters right now, but it will be moving to some more average waters, which, like I said, average, you can't hurt, and you can't hurt to be average, all right? 28 or so Celsius, so like low to mid 80s, all right? Now, looking at this, again, shear will be low to moderate, all right, but then getting pretty high over the next few days. So that's where that's, the word subtropical comes in. Subtropical systems usually have to battle more shear, um, even some cooler water, but this actually is going to be in some warmer waters around 28 Celsius. Heat content could be going up as well over the next few days, maybe to the upper 20s and 30s, as opposed to teens, which is obviously the lower the heat content, the less the storm get its act together. Okay, so now where the low center is currently located, again, if you want to be exact, I would say 54 and a half degrees west and 31 degrees north. All right, so like I said, the higher the latitude north, the farther north it is, so it's pretty high. All right, it's pretty far north. Now, the track guidance, again, shows bringing it south over the next three days. And after that, most models do bring it northward, but does it come east of Bermuda, right? Some models have it going that way, some have it going towards Bermuda. 
So the track, but the track through the next three days is definitely starting out. It's going to be moving southwestward, south-southwest, right, away from Bermuda, but then potentially coming back towards Bermuda. So we have our FNMOC, our GEM, and our European models here. Formation, or chance for tropical cyclone genesis. Now, according to this particular map, there's a couple different maps. According to this particular one, there's an 80 to 90% chance all right, of development with, all right, with that storm center. So it's pretty high chance. All right. So let's go through now the GEFS model tracks. Again, they have it bringing south, southwestward, and hooking it right back north, just east of Bermuda. Again, that black line is the middle, right? If you like, if you were just to take a look at all these different colored models, and it would be a mess, right? Like, which one's right? Which, you know, which one's wrong? The black line, it doesn't tell you which one's right. It just tells you the middle, like the center point, the median, right? At like, like 10 miles might be bringing it toward the left of Bermuda, 10 miles might bring it toward the right. It just puts it right down the middle so it's easier to see, all right? This, this black line could still be wrong as well. But this track, there are several tracks that bring it close to Bermuda. So Bermuda, even if this doesn't make a direct hit on you guys, just be prepared for some, you know, intense rip currents, some higher waves, maybe even some rain bands if it gets close enough. All right, we'll be keeping an eye on Bermuda. Uh, tropical intensity index, and here's Bermuda, so we'll be in a favorable to even highly favorable environment, maybe, after going through a little bit of a rough environment, all right, over the next few days. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. Then we have our GEPS model tracks, which are now updated, I think. Just, even though I just set this up a few minutes ago, it's, it's amazing what can update. All right, so this is why I always refresh before I look at a map. Anyway, a lot of the models bring you a lot closer to Bermuda with the GEPS model, and then I've seen, you'll see, like, when I show you the main models, like the GFS and the GEM later, um, actually in a little bit, you'll see that they actually make it a lot stronger, at least the GFS did, past, once it moves past Bermuda, so this could be a big coastal threat to Canada as well, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, Halifax, could be a big threat to you guys as well, but in the short term, Bermuda, I would definitely keep an eye on the system, it's October, again, we've seen some of the strongest hurricanes develop in October. All right, model intensity guidance. Here we go. So, actually, wait, hold on. I, I have it. I got I got to refresh. There we go. Okay, nothing changed. But a lot of the models do make it at least a tropical storm, mid to high tropical storm. A few models do make it a hurricane. All right, so there there is some there is some. What's the word I'm looking for here? There's definitely a lot of models that are saying that it, it could develop. There's there's some certainties. What I'm looking for certainty with the models. Now, when you take out the European model. We looked at the FNMOC, GEM, and the European. But if we just take a look at the FNMOC and the GEM model, now, all of a sudden, the development chance for the storm system is 100%, which you'll never see that, okay? And the most that could be is 90. We, no, matter how, no matter how enticing or no matter how you know, good an environment might be to develop a system, the chance of development can never be 100%. Unless, unless in the next update, they're going to name it a tropical depression, then it could be 100%, but really the most it can be is 90. But that is signaling definitely uh, a system. Like 100% would be like if it's about to be a depression or storm, then it could be 100%. So when you take out the European model out of this, and then you see development chances go up, that tells me that the European model might not think too highly of the system. We'll see. So the GFS model, I have a zoomed out version, just so you can see the surroundings better as well. Here's a storm you're focusing on, 94L right there, highlighted for you guys. All right, and watch as it moves southwestward. All right, at first, it doesn't gain too much strength. Pressure falls to 1,000 millibars. It is strengthening, but very, very slowly. All right, then it moves. Once it moves north, we got warm air falling around the high pressure. The track pulls it this way, and now our pressure is below 1,000. Those pressure ice lines are much tighter, tightly packed together. We have rain developing to the north of the storm system, and we got a decent tropical storm on our hands. All right, then it moves north, could latch up with the front, and that pressure is really going to start dropping. But also take a look at this. All right, I, like I said, I did want to touch on another system as well. Take a look at this. A nice developing hurricane there with the GFS model. We're going to take a look at that as well. Because like I said, we're not just focusing on 94L. All right. Surface pressure. All right. We got, again, moving to the southwest. It may take, according to this GFS, it may take five to seven days before it moves, starts moving north again. Uh, very hard to see. But you can see some green developing, which means tropical storm force winds. All right. Well, you'll be able to see much better in a second there. There we go. <laughs> you guys can see it definitely on the north side and on the east side. It definitely looks very subtropical, but a subtropical storm is still just as dangerous. All right. And then we got, oh, a hurricane coming right over Cuba, potentially into the Bahamas. We're going to zoom in on that in a bit. All right. Actually, let's do that right now. Let's go to the western Atlantic and let's zoom in on this a lot better. And wow, look at that beast. That is at least, it uh, looks like a cat two or three, judging by the pressure as well. So, 
this could be a potential. Like I said, we have to watch. And look, it goes right up the East Coast as like a major hurricane, or at least a Cat 2 hurricane up the East Coast. All right. All right, Cyclone of Artistic Signature. Let's pull that up. All right, so here we are, the Cyclone of Artistic Signature. All right, again, let's go out. Let's go to about 150 hours, all right, because that's when the storm really starts developing. Like I said, five days, it's starting to move its way southwestward. Then over the next like six, seven days, it may start to move north again. All right, there's 94L. Here's our other disturbance, which, especially that GFS one I just saw, we have to keep an eye on that other disturbance a lot. All right, we got to keep very close eye on it, because look at this thing. All right, so this is why we're talking about both systems in this video. There is 94L moving its way northbound. All right, gem model. Here we go. Canadian model, let's see what they think. So there is a system moving south. Again, gaining pressure to about 1,000 millibars, or losing pressure, I should say, gaining strength. But this has gaining strength a bit better at first, and then moving north, again, east of Bermuda, and then here's the other system. All right, now looking as strong as the GFS had it, but they still have a second system developing. Then that also gets strong. All right, then we have another system behind that one, behind the second one that's in the Caribbean, we have something behind that. All right, so this is looking uh, pretty impressive here. All right, I, there's usually a peak in, well, I wouldn't say a peak, there's a bump up in activity in October. Like it, like at like September 10th is the official day peak, but that's, that's, that's clientological data. All right, obviously September 11th or 12th or 13th could be active as well, but September 10th is a technical peak day that you might notice that end of September might not be so bad depending on the year, but usually October, Climatologically, we see a little bump up again. So this could be that bump up that we're talking about. All right, wind data with the GEM model. So you got the high pressure to the north here. That's gonna, there's your tropical storm force wind that's gonna eventually pull it north. Uh, first low, 94L should not get too close to the United States. All right, needless to say, there could still be some, definitely could be some higher waves, although it looks like it's really far off the coast. Like if it looks like coming at Bermuda or west of Bermuda, I would definitely think that the US has a bigger wave threat, but doesn't look like that as of now, but still be on guard, right? And any day, right? When you're, especially if you're at the beach. I don't. I mean, I'm sure some of you still go to the beach at this time of year. But also keep in mind the king tides are in effect for the southeast too. There's an event going on right now, and then mid-November as well. So keep an eye on those king tides. And if a storm comes at king tides, that's going to be devastating. All right. Last map here. Here's a gem model, bringing it south and coming back north. All right. There's 94L right there. And then we had our other disturbance, uh, not named in invest yet, we'll just call it the other disturbance moving through Cuba. So both models, GFS and GEM, had it coming on shore in Cuba. GFS said a hurricane, Q I mean, uh, GEM model said a tropical storm. So we'll see. Be very close. We're going to keep a very close eye on this. Ring the bell notifications and subscribe if you want to stay tuned for future videos. I am the Weather Dude, signing off till next time. Stay awesome, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.